You should have more sense than to let this scene upset you. I have no family either, but I don't take it to heart the way you do. With your poor health, you ought to look after yourself. It's too bad of Pao Chai and Pao Chin. They kept saying our club must meet to celebrate the Moon Festival this year by writing a poem together. But now they've abandoned us and gone off to celebrate it on their own. Instead of our meeting to write a poem, the men and boys of the house have had things all their own way. As the old saying goes, how can an outsider be allowed to sleep beside one's bed? Well, if they won't join in, why don't the two of us write a poem together? Tomorrow we can shame them with it. All right, but it's too noisy here to have any poetic inspiration. Enjoying the moonlight on this hill is good, but it's better still by the water. You know that lake at the foot of this hill and concave crystal lodge by the inlet there? A lot of thought went into designing this garden. The crest of the hill is called Convex Emerald, and the creek in the lake below, Concave Crystal. Convex and concave, so seldom used before, make fresh original names. And these two places, one above, one below, one bright, one dark, one hill, one water, seem specially designed for enjoying the moonlight. Those who like to look at the moon from a height can come here. Those who prefer to see its reflection in water can go there. To tell you the truth, I'm the one who suggested both names. It was when we proposed names for places which hadn't yet been given any and marked their localities. They were taken to the palace and shown to elder sister, who sent them to uncle, and he was delighted. He said if only he'd known, he'd have asked us girls to help with the names, and he accepted them all without changing a word. Well, let's go to Concave Crystal Lodge. So they're asleep. Good. Let's enjoy the water and moonlight under this awning. What fun it would be to drink now in a boat on the lake. If we were at my home, I'd take a boat out. As the ancients often said, what enjoyment can there be if everything is perfect? To my mind, this is quite good enough. It's only natural for men to hanker for more. Didn't the old people often say, the poor think the rich have all their heart's desire? Try to disabuse them, and they won't believe you, unless they grow rich themselves. Take the two of us, for instance. Although we've lost our parents, we're living in luxury, yet we have a lot to upset us. We aren't the only ones. Even their ladyships, Pao Yu, Tan Chan and the others, can't have their way in everything, big and small, even if they have good reason for wanting something. That applies to everyone, especially girls like us, who are living with other families, not our own. Well, enough of this idle talk. Let's get on with our poem. Their ladyships are in high spirits today. This fluting is pleasant and should give us inspiration. As we both like five character lines, let's make regulated couplets in that metre. What rhymes shall we use? Suppose we count the bars from this end of the railing to the other to decide which category of rhymes to use. For example, if it's 16, we'll use the Xian rhymes. Wouldn't that make a change? That's certainly original. It would be 13. That means the Yuan group of rhymes. There aren't too many for a long poem of couplets, so it may be awkward. Still, you must make a start. We'll see which of us does better. We ought to have a paper and brush to write it down. We can copy it out tomorrow. There's no danger of forgetting it before then. All right then. I'll start with a pat phrase. Mid-autumn's 15th night is here again. As on the Feast of Lanterns we stroll round, the sky above is sprinkled with bright stars. And everywhere sweet strings and pipes resound. Goblets fly here and there as men carouse. I like that last line. I must find something good to match it. No house but has its windows opened wide. The breeze that softly fans the air is chill. You've capped my attempt. But your second line is trite. You should go from strength to strength. A long poem with tricky rhymes has to be padded out a bit. We can use some good lines later. If you don't, you should be ashamed. But bright as day, the fine night scene outside. The greybeard grabbing for a cake is mocked. That's no good. It's not classical. You're putting me on the spot by using an everyday incident like that. I'd say you hadn't read many books. This reference to cakes is a classical illusion. 
You should read the Tang Dynasty records before you talk. Well, you haven't foxed me. I've got it. Green girls share melons, laughing themselves silly. How fresh the scent of jade osmanthus bloom. That really has no classical source. Tomorrow we'll look it up for everyone to see. Let's not waste time now. How bright the regal gold of the daylily. Wax candles set the sumptuous feast aglow. Wild drinking games a splendid park confuse. Opposing sides obey the self-same rule. Those guessing riddles hear three different clues. The dice is thrown and wins. The dots are red. Drums speed the blossom passed from hand to hand. The courtyard scintillates with limpid light. A silver splendour merges sky and land. For hosts and guests alike, the same requital. Verses are written, turn and turn about. One leaning on the barricade to think. One tapping the door to make the scene stand out. Engrossed as ever, though the wine is drunk. They savour the last watches of the night. Then comes a gradual end to talk and laughter. Nought's left now, but the waning frosty light. By the steps, dew-drenched hibiscus blooms at dawn. In the courtyard, Miss the Albizia shrouds. Autumn rapids pour forth through the core of rocks. Windswept leaves gather at the root of clouds. Lonely and pure, the lady of the star. The silver toad puffs and deflates the moon. Elixirs are prepared by the jade hair. The goddess flies towards the palace of cold void. One soars on high to greet waving maid and cowherd. One sails a bark to the heavenly maiden fair. The orb forever changing wanes and waxes. At each month's start and end, but its ghost is there. Clepsidra's water is well nigh run dry. Look there, that looks like a man in the dark. Could it be a ghost? You're imagining things again. I'm not afraid of ghosts, I'll hit it. So that's all it was. I didn't think it could be a stork. It gave me quite a fright. How amusing. It's given me an idea. The lamp by the window is no longer bright. The stork's shadow flits across the chilly pool. This, this confounded stork has helped her. This line is even more original than the one about autumn rapids. How am I going to match it? The only parallel for shadow is spirit. A stork flitting across the chilly pool sounds so natural, apt, vivid and original too. I shall have to give up. We can find something if we both think hard, or else leave it until tomorrow. You needn't gloat, I've got it. Listen. The poet's spirit is buried in cold moonlight. <laughs>